So I'm obsessed with this Kevin Samuels things. As you know, I told you um, I wasn't really familiar with him until he died. And then like I saw him catching all this heat and I was like, damn, like who, what's going on that this guy's getting lit up like in death. Like people were like dancing on his grapes. I was like, okay, let, let me find out what the deal is. So I watched Kevin Samuels for a week straight hours on end. My takeaway, I am astonished at how little women over 30 seem to know about men. Number two, astonished at how many women said God was going to magically send them a guy. Like, you still believe in Santa too? Either that or they were going to manifest it. Or they're going to manifest it. You know, since people are trying to move on from church stuff now. I am overweight with three kids, two different baby daddies. I have a high school diploma and I want to date Idris Elba. Halle Berry wants to date Iris, uh, Idris Elba and she didn't bag him. Who the fuck are you? The conversations were so out to lunch. I understood some of his frustration. Now, did he roast some women? Yeah. Was he an asshole sometimes? Absolutely. Was he a straight up dick other times? For sure. But what's worse, his delivery or the message, which was aim in your box. Know thyself. Every girl has nails. Every girl has hair. Take that money and invest it in assets so you can be one of the options that a successful man that you want wants. What mm. makes you? I know why you want Idris Elba. Why would Idris Elba want you? Mm. Those are your preferences. And you. nine out of 10 women were like, I can cook. I, I'm kind. When do men walk outside looking for women who can cook who are kind? And I think part of the problem is it's generations of people being raised by single moms. So you're not in a house watching a dynamic between a man and a woman or even a, a man and a woman who are in a relationship. You're not seeing that exchange between male and female, how to move forward, how to step back, when to talk to a man about certain things, when not to just getting that temperature gauge, just understanding what that feels like. I could tell by the way the conversations were going that most of these women were raised in single mother homes or and going to therapists who are also single overweight women. So I go to a mentor who has all the things I want. She's married 30 years to a doctor. She lives in Pacific Palisades, but has worked herself for 25 years because it's important for women to have their own money. I go to her for guidance because she's achieved the things I want to achieve. If I want to be skinny, I'm not going to go to a fat person for advice. Huh. I'm not saying that there's not wealth of information and they could tell you what not to do, but at a certain point you need to learn what to do. And I was astounded by how many women speaking to Kevin Samuels did not know what to do to bag a man. So one thing that pissed off a lot of women was him talking about their weight. A lot of women were like, oh my God, you know, a man who loves me will accept me for who I am. Okay. Well, if that plan is working, then why are you calling into Kevin Samuels? And where is your wedding ring? Men are visual creatures. We know that. So the first thing they're going to do is look at a woman that they find physically attractive, whatever that is to them. Now, are there men who like big girls? Yes. Great. But if you look at the type of men these women claim they want, look at the type of women those men have been seen with. Do they look like you? And if they don't, think about it and either emulate the type of women they're walking around with or aim for a man in your sandbox. That's the takeaway I got from Kevin Samuels. And people were outraged over every, everything he said. And I, I didn't see it that way. Yeah, is he, does he roast you sometimes? Yeah. But he really, for the most part, only roasted women who got argumentative or were trying to tell him he was wrong about what he knew about men. So he's like, I'm telling you, men are visual. No, I disagree with you. I don't, I, I, we'll have to agree to disagree. He's like, no, your opinion isn't equal to the fact that men are biologically visual creatures. Mm. So people are equating feelings to facts. And when he called people out on it, they got upset. I cannot believe the amount of women who got on that podcast, not dressed properly, bonnets on their hair in the middle of talking to him. They look over to the side, start chatting with a friend. <laughs> yeah, <girl. laughs> You're on TV. Like act like you've got some fucking class. And I saw almost zero class. Mm -hmm. And Shannon Sharp, just talked about this the other day because I guess Dr. Umar Johnson was shitting on him for dating outside the race. And he said, why is it that we have to be held to dating people within the race who don't necessarily make us happy? Woo! So I should date someone in my race and be unhappy than date somebody outside. And part of the reason for that is like Kevin Samuels said, look at the attitude. Like you can't even talk to a woman and say, hey, can you change this? 
nine out of 10 got defensive. The ones who didn't get defensive, who was like, wow, I need to think he was, he didn't roast them. It's the ones who got argumentative that he was like, okay, now I'm going to roast you. What are you on a scale of one to 10? Can't use the number seven. I'm a 10. Halle Berry's a 10, bitch. What are you? <laughs> Rihanna is a 10, bitch. What are you? Sade is a 10. Iman is a 10. Halle Berry was nominated most beautiful woman in the world four years in a row. So I asked the question again. On a scale of one to 10, bitch, what are you? Mm -hmm. Half of them lied about their weight and size. What size are you? I'm a size four. How much do you weigh? 180. Anyway. You're not a size four. <laughs> And I'm looking at your face. It, it was a lot of buffoonery on the part of the women. And I was honestly, I was genuinely astounded at, at how little women over 30 know about men. I mean, to your point about like being raised by other single women who don't know how to deal with men, like absolutely. And then also mentorship. Instead of seeking out a mentor who has the things that they want, people seek out a prayer group or a group of friends, a group chat, whatever, that just validates whatever the fuck they say. So you get that, you get a group version of misery. Looks yes. Free. You get a group version of fuck them, girl. And then you wonder why you're in a clique of single women, overweight women, unhappy women. Is every man a visual only person? Does every man want a skinny girl? No, but you need to look at what the men you like are doing, dating, hanging out. Where are they? What are their interests? And then gravitating towards that. Not sitting there in juicy couture sweatpants from 15 years ago with you know an extra 40 pounds of weight with a kid busting through the room door screaming while you're on a podcast with a bonnet on your head. And then you're mystified that Denzel Washington didn't look at you. I mean, I don't know if it's mental illness. I don't know if it's delusional. I don't know. I don't know what kind of thinking that is. When I look like shit, I don't go outside and, and expect, you know, the, the man of my dreams to trip over himself and six people to get to me if I look like trash. Mm -hmm. and, and that's the thing. It's not about like coming down on bonnets or anything like that. It's don't have the expectation that Idris Elba or Denzel Washington is going to ask you out, you know, and leave their wife or whatever for you. If you Fuck go out, that. I'm coming down on bonnets. I'm coming down on bonnets. Why yeah. are you wearing that outside? It's not a hat. It's a bonnet. It looks like you're about to pick weeds. She said pick weeds. Oh my God. <laughs> what? When did that become okay for women of color to go outside looking like trash. You look what, at what, what Black women looked like during the civil rights movement when people were getting beaten on bridges. They were in suits. They were in, in beautiful outfits, hair done, beautiful hats, fishnet stockings. What is this that I'm looking at? Bonnets with big fake nails on. <laughs> so you got long orange fake nails on, but your hair is not done. Your toenails aren't done. And you're wearing clothes where your underwear is showing above your pants and the pants are too small for you because you've gained 30 pounds since the last time you wore them. And you want God to manifest a husband. You look like you're on your way to the methadone clinic. What quality person is going to be like, that's the one, that's the one, the one with the long toenails, the fake nails, the bonnet with an attitude. And most of the women that Kevin Samuels roasted had an attitude. And he was like, I can't even talk to you. That is something to be said about being people that are combative in general, argumentative in general. That's fine. Just for the sake of arguing. If that's who you are, that's cool. But again, does your preference prefer you? If you say, I am never settling for a man who's not a millionaire, fine. Do you think that millionaire wants to be with someone who's argumentative and combative? Right. Or I'm never going to be submissive. And yet eight out of 10 women saying that they won't be submissive to a man are Christian women. And submission is part of your beliefs. So you're inconsistent with your own belief system. So you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. So you certainly don't know what you're doing. At the same time, though, it's the black pastors who, who know that 90 percent of their audience, at least 80 percent of their audience and 90 percent of their money comes from black women, many of whom are, are single and working. class. of their money poor, comes from black women who tell them this shit. Mm -hmm. Black women are paving the, the church pathway out of gold to heaven. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, the pastor sleeping with half the church. Mm hmm. 10% of black women's money is gone. And yet they don't even have 10% of the assets in the United States. Mm -hmm. Ain't got nothing to show for it. The church isn't doing anything for people. What, what has the black church done lately? A potluck here or there, a Thanksgiving turkey? Sure. On a consistent basis, again, it, are the churches moving the spiritual needle forward? Doesn't mm -hmm. seem to be that way. People are getting murdered more and more every day.